Hello, folks, and welcome back to The Shack. This is Joe N2DI, today with the Rig Expert AA55 Zoom. I'm not going to be talking today specifically about the AA55, but more generally about antenna analyzers, what they do, how they work, and how to use one. This video is in response to a viewer request. When you're new to the hobby, there's a bewildering number of things that are vying for your hard-earned money. It's hard to differentiate if you really need certain items, and an antenna analyzer is one of those things. If you want to know more about them to make an informed decision, then stay tuned. I'll do my best to explain them without making your head explode. So if that sounds good, then let's get started. The antenna analyzer is pretty high on the list of things that you should purchase when you're starting out. And by starting out, I mean starting out in HF. If you're a tech and you're only using VHF or UHF, then it's not really necessary. But for HF, it should be pretty high on your list. You definitely need a power supply and a radio and an antenna. But immediately following that, you should get an antenna tuner and an antenna analyzer. Can you get by without an antenna analyzer? The short answer is yes, but it's difficult, especially when you're just starting out and you don't understand things yet. So what is an antenna analyzer? An antenna analyzer is a device that helps you diagnose and correct issues with your antenna system. They usually can do a few things, but primarily, they measure standing wave ratio, sometimes referred to as SWR, or more accurately, VSWR. If you already understand standing wave ratio, then hang on a minute while I catch up the folks who are just learning. Now this will be a simplified explanation, and I'll be generally talking about resident antennas. Now, when you transmit from your radio, it sends an RF signal out of the antenna port, down your coax, into your antenna. When that energy hits the antenna, it's radiated out if everything is working correctly. Now for that to work correctly, your radio wants to see a 50 ohm load. Your coax is usually 50 ohms, and if your antenna is perfectly matched, it will appear to be a 50 ohm load as well. Now the problem that you will most frequently encounter is that your antenna will not appear to be a perfect 50 ohm load. And that happens for a variety of reasons. Now when your antenna does not appear to be a 50 ohm load, then some portion of the power that you transmitted that hits the antenna isn't radiated. It is instead reflected back to your radio. That portion of reflected power versus what you send out when you transmit is described with standing wave ratio. And that's usually represented as a number to one, like two to one or three to one. The one part of the ratio is what you're sending out like 100% of your power. The other number represents how much is coming back to the radio. You can look up what the values mean percentage-wise. So for instance, if you have a 2 to 1 SWR, then about 11% of your power is being reflected back. Now, most radios will tell you what your SWR is when you transmit. So then why do you need an antenna analyzer? Well, that's one of the ways how you could possibly get by without an antenna analyzer. You could look at the SWR on your radio, and it will show you something just like you see here on this antenna analyzer. But what the problem is that you'll encounter is when your SWR is really out of whack, meaning it's very high, then the reflected power can damage or even destroy your radio. Now, modern radios are less prone to that, but you still don't want to stress out the components of your transceiver. So using an antenna analyzer protects you from damaging your radio while you adjust your antenna. It also does a bunch of other useful things that make working on your antenna easier. So now that you understand SWR, here's a quick footnote. Understanding SWR makes understanding an antenna tuner easier. The purpose of an antenna tuner is it sits between your radio and your antenna, and it adjusts the impedance on the radio side of the connection to match 50 ohms, so your radio is happy. And on the antenna side, it absorbs reflected power, so it doesn't damage your radio. Okay, back to the analyzer. So how does it work? In short, it simulates your radio and measures SWR. Well, it measures a lot of things, but SWR is usually what you're most interested with. Now, SWR varies with a bunch of things, but frequency is one of them. You'll get a different SWR as your frequency varies. Your SWR will go down as you get closer to the resonant frequency of an antenna, and it will go up as you move away from the resonant frequency. Let's so take a look at this antenna analyzer. Right now, I'm scanning at 24, 940 megahertz. Now watch as I vary the frequency. Watch the SWR. Now we're 24,930 and it went down a bit. You see, as I move the frequency down, we're heading towards a resonant point on this antenna. 
and now it's going back up because we're passing the resonant point. So the antenna analyzer transmits a low power RF signal and it measures what's being reflected back. Now it could do that for a single frequency like your radio does, but it can also sweep a bunch of frequencies, unlike your radio can. And this makes working on your antenna a lot easier. It can plot the SWR versus frequency on a graph. Just like you see here. Now what you see here in that blue stripe is the 12 meter band. It goes from 24,890 megahertz to 24,990 megahertz. So that's that blue band in the middle. And we're zoomed out a bit so you're seeing more of the frequency spectrum. And the yellow line represents your SWR. Here you can see a dip towards the resonant frequency and it tells you down at the bottom the minimum SWR is 1.37 at 24,825 megahertz. Now why does plotting your SWR like this help? Let's say you have a wire antenna like a dipole. A dipole is cut to a specific length to resonate at a specific frequency. If you do a good job cutting it, then the SWR will be really close to or right on one-to-one -one for that frequency. But it will also resonate fairly well on the surrounding frequencies. Now you're looking at a graph of SWR versus frequency here. That smile-shaped dip that you see is around the resonant frequency of the antenna. The center of that dip is where the antenna is most resonant. So you can see that dip is below the 12 meter band. Ideally, you'd want that dip to line up to be centered directly in the middle or perhaps higher and lower if you're just gonna use CW or voice or digital. Now, normally you would cut your dipole to be a little bit long. This way the SWR is below the band that you're interested in. So right now I'm using an antenna tuner to simulate this. What you would do now at this point is you would attach your antenna analyzer to your antenna and you begin to trim it until that SWR dip lines up with the band that you're interested in. Now I'm going to simulate trimming this by using the antenna tuner here. So as you would trim a little off the antenna, you'll see that dip move just like it is now. And what you would do is trim a little bit off and trim a little bit more off until you get it to land exactly how you want it. And in this case, this would be pretty darn good. It's most resonant at 24,945 and the SWR is 1.03 to 1. Now usually an SWR below 2 to 1 will not hurt your radio. And you can see here that for the entire band we're under 1.5 to 1. We could zoom in a bit here so you can get some more detail. So one of the most important things an antenna analyzer can do for you is to give you this SWR versus frequency plot. It makes it really easy to see what you're doing versus something like the SWR meter on your radio, which will just give you your SWR at a specific frequency. Okay, so how do you actually use a Rig Expert AA55, for example? Now, all antenna analyzers are kind of similar. So unless you have an AA55, the button presses that you'll have to do here will be slightly different. But for an AA55, you'd want to find, let's say if you wanted to plot an SWR chart, you would find the SWR chart from the menu, select OK, and it'll scan your specific frequency range. So let's set a frequency range. Here I press the frequency range button, and let's go down to, say, 40 meters. Okay, it's going to scan the entire 40 meter band. What you see there is the center frequency, and then below that, you see it'll scan plus or minus 150 kilohertz. So that means the bottom of the scan will go down to 7 megahertz, and the top of the scan will be at 7.3 megahertz, and the screen will be centered on 7.150 megahertz. So we press OK, and there's our scan. So you can see our SWR dip. And here the antenna is a little long unless you're a CW operator like I am. The minimum SWR is 1.05 at 7.030 megahertz. So now what else can you do? Well, you could look at a Smith chart. I'm going to change the frequency from being a range to one specific frequency.
Okay. Now this is a Smith chart. I'm sure for some of you, your eyes just rolled up into your head. Hang on a second because getting a rudimentary understanding of a Smith chart without being a rocket scientist is possible. Now if you ignore those arcs and just look at it like it's a target, then the bullseye in the very center means that you have 50 ohms of impedance. So if you're able to hit the bullseye here, you'd have a perfect one-to-one -one SWR. Now you don't need to understand inductance or capacitance or resistance, but all of those things combined make up an impedance value. Now, like I said, if you have a perfect 50 ohms of impedance, you'll be hitting that bullseye. If you have too much inductance in your system, then you'll be hitting the chart somewhere above the center horizontal line. And if you have too much capacitance, then you'll be hitting this chart below that line. Resistance is represented by that horizontal line. Now, if you have your antenna analyzer hooked up to your coax that's attached to your antenna tuner, then attached to your antenna, as you adjust your antenna tuner, you will see it adding or removing inductance or adding or removing capacitance to get you closer to that bullseye. You can also do a lot of other things with an antenna analyzer. This AA55 lets you see the Smith chart like you just saw, the SWR chart, an SWR meter. You can look at multiple frequencies to check the SWR. You can figure out the length or velocity factor of your coax. You could check your coax for loss. You can check your coax impedance. You can also look at the components that make up your impedance value. Like here we talked about capacitance and inductance. You can see those here as well as resistance, the SWR. You can get a lot of information. Okay, let's talk about cost and some options. The price of an antenna analyzer will go up with the maximum frequency. Let's take rig expert analyzers as an example. They're generally known as being some of the best antenna analyzers for hams. The AA35, which goes up to 35 megahertz, is about $230. The AA55, which I have here, that goes up to 55 megahertz and costs $260 currently. The AA650 goes up to 650 megahertz and costs $600. And the AA 1500 goes up to 1.5 gigahertz and it costs about 900 bucks. Now there are other options too. A nano VNA H4 goes for $82. And that can scan all the way up to 1.5 gigahertz too. If you want more information on a nano VNA H4, then watch my video, Nano VNA, all the little stuff nobody explains. I'll link the video in the description below. You can use a VNA as an antenna analyzer, but they're a little bit more involved with the setup. But if you're willing to deal with that, you could save a ton of money. Let's sum up. Should you buy an antenna analyzer or a nano VNA? In my opinion, you should. Even if you only plan on buying your antennas instead of building one, there are a lot of things that can affect your SWR. It's not just frequency and antenna length. Your coax loss, antenna height, proximity to things like metal objects, and some other factors can impact your SWR. So having a tool that can help you understand your antenna system and what's going on and correct those issues will help you reach out further and more efficiently with your radio. And that's the whole idea, right? You want to be able to make contacts with your radio. That's it for today, folks. Add your questions in the comments below, and I'll do my best to try to answer them. So from the Shack of Joe, November 2, Delta, India, I wish you all good health and a one-to-one -one SWR. 73. Bye-bye.